another chest x-ray and have a good look at this chest x-ray in different window level settings and you don't have to look too closely to tell that the x-ray was taken in erect position and is grossly abnormal from radiology point of view hardly any part of both lungs can be classified as normal other than this area and this bit probably here as well the x-ray shows countless cyst of varying sizes visible through both lungs so this is a cyst here this is a cyst here this is a cyst here a big one here some of them are a small cyst this one here uh, and there are they are countless some of them are visible through retrocardic area here notice uh, some of these cyst such as this one and this one and this one here appear to have air fluid levels and that is the reason for us to believe that the x-ray was taken in erect position either standing or sitting if the same patient was to be x-rayed in supine position you would not see these air fluid levels a fluid level is simply an interface of air and fluid in a cavity or in a confined area in erect position fluid falls towards the gravity and air being lighter rises up creating such straight lines such as this one we known as air fluid level in radiology in supine position the fluid will still fall towards the gravity means towards the back of the patient and air will still rise up but you will be looking at these cavities from top so the fluid levels will not be visible to you some of these cyst such as this one appear to have a crescent opaque inferior borders rest of such cavities above this crescent border you have an air density so rest of the cavities are filled with air now these uh, cysts are actually dilated bronchi rather than anything else the condition if not confined to limited areas of lungs can be deadly and is known as bronchiectasis bronchiectasis by definition is a permanent and irreversible dilatation of bronchi as a result of dilatation bronchi lose their ability to clear mucus accumulation of mucus within dilated bronchi causes frequent infections only to worsen the condition of the patient please note that normal diameter of trachea should be between 21 to 27 millimeters in adults right and left main bronchi should be much smaller than trachea in a healthy person and the branches of bronchial tree should get smaller and smaller in size as they divide even each bronchial branch should taper at the distal end in this case notice some of these dilated bronchi are bigger than the trachea itself there are three forms of the condition known as cylindrical bronchiectasis varicose bronchiectasis and cystic bronchiectasis and what is in front of you is known as cystic or secular bronchiectasis as you can see multiple cyst or sacs in cystic bronchiectasis many large dilatations of bronchi end up in big and small cyst that may get filled with pus blood and mucus so what you're seeing here is uh, a thick crescent line is actually thick pus which is falling towards the uh, inferior border of the dilated uh, bronchi which uh, is like a cyst in shape in other cyst 
where the fluid may be a bit watery, you can see air fluid levels. Any disease or condition that can damage the bronchial wall repeatedly may cause bronchiectasis. And it is not limited to an age or gender. Even young children can have bronchiectasis as a result of just one bad viral or bacterial pneumonia. Almost a dozen diseases and conditions can lead to bronchiectasis, but, but most frequently it is associated with uh, any previous infection such as viral or bacterial pneumonia. Viral pneumonia especially in young children and once a child has bronchiectasis it becomes a continuous headache for young patient as well as parents as it causes pneumonia frequently. Cystic fibrosis is another uh, condition which is uh, a result of faulty genes that are transmitted from parents to children. People with cystic fibrosis can have uh, bronchiectasis very frequently. Tuberculosis is another condition. Histoplasmosis which is a fungal infection and allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which is associated with asthma. Measles and AIDS are also one of the conditions that can cause uh, bron bronchiectasis. Although the x-ray that we are seeing uh, here is a very very good and classic example of bronchiectasis, but plain x-ray is not an ideal tool to make this diagnosis. Only severity of uh, this disease in this patient is making the condition visible on this x-ray. Very frequently bronchitis cannot be seen on chest x-ray and investigation of choice is a high resolution CT scan of chest or uh, HRCT. And as you know CT is a cross-sectional imaging anyway and the sensitivity, sensitivity is much better than plain x-rays in any case. So here is a close up of right uh, lower zone of uh, lung. You can see countless uh, cyst, some with fluid levels. This is a small one. This is a fluid level. The mucus or pus or blood is accumulated towards the bottom of the cyst. And the thin cyst wall is actually visible uh, at the top. And these are also dilated bronchi. Uh, axial uh, HRCT image. And uh, HRCT would be, would be suggestive of bronchiectasis if the internal diameter of a bronchus is visibly and significantly larger than the pulmonary artery branch in the same bronchovascular bundle. So this is the the bronchus and this is the pulmonary artery much smaller than the internal diameter of the the bronchus. Now the, the wall of the bronchus may be thick to indicate the inflammation of uh, uh, bronchus but you have to measure the internal diameter of the bronchus and compare it to the pulmonary artery uh, which is in the same uh, bronchovascular bundle and it should be visibly and significantly larger uh, the bronchus should be significantly and visibly larger than the pulmonary artery. If you look closely the thing looks like a ring, a signet ring, uh, a magnified view. So This is a sign which is known as a sign, signet ring sign on a CT scan. Another one here but in this case see the, the diameter of the pulmonary artery and the diameter